Hello everyone, my name is Clancy's and welcome to the Clancy's so without further ado, let's get into this uh, video. But before we get into the video, for Coco Passer 193, San Bonani, Guinea Tanda. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for the wait and the patience, you guys, and all the wonderful messages that I've been getting from y'all. I did not disappear. If you remember very well, we had like almost a week of no Rata's courtroom, I think last week. And of course, work has also held me by the neck these days. And I really could not do anything to escape. I was coming home pretty late. And on top of that, I was also participating in my other channels, 30 days of going live streaming challenge, which uh, finished on the 31st of May. 2024 so i'm excited that i'm over that challenge i'm i mean 30 days guys going live every single day anyways it was fun i enjoyed myself and uh now i am back i am here and i want to say thank you all thank you all for the wonderful messages and the love that you always show me i appreciate it but other than that guys please do me a big favor by smashing the like button because guys we need to start from scratch I need those 1,000 likes because the numbers are starting to go down. So let's pick them up again by smashing the like button and also leaving a comment about what did you think about Pinky's testimony since she started yesterday. But we will get there. But before that, let's go to the Nohal Teng High Court to judge Rata's courtroom. I almost said something else. So, of course, during my work, I was trying to still here and there, trying to listen to Pinky. I'm not going to try calling her surname because I know I'm going to butcher it. So, I'm just going to call her Pinky. Pinky. Okay? So, for me, when Pinky took the stand, I had mixed feelings. I had anticipations, suspicions. And all the stuff that you can imagine regarding Vodacom. But again, I was thinking, this is Vodacom. They are very much interested in, keeping, in making sure that the credibility of the organization is kept well. And therefore, whoever goes and represents the organization, whether in court or in the public, they need to uphold the integrity of uh, the uh, company. So I don't think that Pinky would do anything to jeopardize that especially her job that is why i was picking up some kind of like a mixed feelings about her there were parts where i felt that she really was scared to say a few things and in other parts where she felt a little bit comfortable saying some few things and the part where she was feeling comfortable in saying those things those are the parts that i believed her where even uh, judge rata was trying to try and put something in her mouth she kept spreading it out and I like that about her. And I was like, okay, I think this witness is somebody that we can trust going forward. For me, the biggest picture is Vodacom. And there is no way that she is going to jeopardize that credibility and integrity of the company. Because she may have a few skeletons in her closet that maybe, and I'm saying maybe, Kininda may have against her or whoever may have against her and made her to come and take the stand. However, though, her testimony yesterday gave me whole stain, uh, Mabasa, and all the phone numbers that were being read. And I kept thinking, but ma'am, I thought you were coming on the stand with transcripts. So we get to hear exactly what these conversations were about between Kelly Kumalo and accused number five. Because you could tell that the fishing ex exhibition ex ex expedition. Because you could tell that the fishing expedition was about Kelly Kumalo as well as accused number five linking up in a phone call or two in commissioning what eventually happened on the 26th of October 2014. But of course, we did not see all of that. All that I was hearing is numbers being called. And the part that was frustrating me the most is that these numbers were not being associated with their owners. For example, a number that ends with whatever, whatever, this number belongs to accused number whatever. That sort of stuff that I was I was trying to get at, but I was not getting it. She was just reading numbers. And I'm like, but what is it that she's doing that is different from what Stain has done, except for a number of discrepancies that, that I heard from her testimony that do not link at all with what Stain had said on the stand, which I thought to myself, oh my goodness, here goes the cooking 
it's going on. SPD continued to testify in Rata's courtroom. You could tell that she was going towards the swim swap of Senzo Mayor's cell phone. And in my head, I was like, Ooh, what is the state planning now? In my mind, I was thinking, okay, if all else fail in pinning the death of Senzo Mayor on the five people, they better have plan B. And the plan B, I think they are sneaking it in slowly but surely, or they are just introducing it slowly but surely. And I'll tell you what exactly that I suspect they are slowly introducing, if not sneaking into this particular trial. So I feel like the state is coming at Kenny Kumalo sideways. Not only Kenny Kumalo, they are coming at sideways, but they are also coming sideways for both the father and son, that being Chico Twala and Longa Twala. Come on, let's think about it. In yesterday's testimony by Pinky, she mentioned the Chico Twala cell phone pinging at the hospital. But now we know that at the hospital, there was Kelly Kumalo, the sister, the boys, uh, the, uh, the neighbor, and uh, the one that also uh, cleaned the scene. Chico Twala was nowhere near until later on, where after Kelly Kumalo allegedly had called him first, to announce what had happened to Senzo Mehiwa. Now, my question was, the eight cell phones that the Rata Mukwatleng is so very much interested in Kenny Kumalo having them, and possibility of pinning all eight cell phones on Kenny Kumalo, made me think, like, was it possible that Kenny Kumalo may have also had, amongst the eight cell phones, Chico Twala's cell phone? Because, think about it, when uh, the cell phone was uh, identified at the hospital, at that time, Kelly Kumala and the sister were still there. Remember, Longo Twala ran away, pushed one of the two intruders, and off he went. Right? So there is no way that uh, uh, Longo Twala was using his father's cell phone, or maybe Zandile being the, boy, the girlfriend of Longwe, and maybe Zandi at some point did not have a cell phone, and uh, Chico Twala may have borrowed he, uh, his cell phone, and uh, hence it was pinging at the hospital. But from where I am standing, it sounds as though that Chico Twala may find himself in the slammers because of the pinging of his cell phone. How he's going to explain himself away with that one is going to be interesting to see. And then there was this unknown cell phone call that Rata Mukhotlen tried his level best to shove down Pinky's mouth, but Pinky kept spitting it and said, uh-uh, I'm not saying that. But there is an unidentified call. We don't know where it's coming from. And then, of course, Rata wanted to know that if it's a, 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 it exists, of course it exists, it's there in her data. But to whom it belongs to, Vodacom does not know. But you could tell that this is the point where the state, together, I think, you know, they were trying to pin that phone call between Kelly Kumalo and accused number five. And the other interesting thing about Pinky's testimony yesterday was about the towers, where this particular call or this particular cell phone was not picking up. It was giving me AVL deja vu, where the AVL would lock off at important places and locations that could actually uh, exonerate the accused. So now we're having towers that we're not picking up. I was like, wait a minute. I think when the defense that come on board, they really need to push this one about the towers getting off here and the possibility of those towers and cell phone not picking up. I can understand when you are traveling long distance that that may actually happen because sometimes when you travel long distance, like some of us who come from Durban, as we travel uh, along the M3, sometimes we don't get a network. But this is the city of Johannesburg. You are inside one of the advanced provinces, possibly anywhere on the African continent. And you are telling me some of those towers were not picking up the uh, and pinging cell phone, uh, some cell phone uh, networks. To me, that was a little bit dodge. But again, remember, do we trust Pinky or don't we trust Pinky? For me, at this point, I think I do trust her. 
I do trust what she's saying because she's not going to jeopardize her job for whoever that one that is busy cooking this case. And then came today, unfortunately, Pinky, you could tell that she was ill. Listen, guys, this flu has us all. I am not even sure if I've recovered or I'm not recovering because some days when I wake up in the morning, I'm groggy. Sometimes when the sun sets, I'm coughing. And sometimes when I am sitting while working, I am, my nose is clogged and I have no idea what is going on. For me, I've had this flu probably now for a little over a month. So I understand what Pinky was saying uh, that she's been having this flu for the past three weeks. It refuses to go away. If you know what the name of the strand, please let me know. And how do we get rid of this horrible flu? If you haven't got it, please take care of yourself. And I hope Pinky gets well very soon because she's very important at this point for this case. So today, finally, Pinky's testimony dove into Senzo Mayo's SIM card being swabbed. Uh, being swapped at 9.04 in the morning of the 27th of October 2014. However, we did see the movement of the cell phone post the death of Senzo Mewa going absolutely everywhere in Johannesburg, almost Gauteng, or maybe half of Gauteng for that matter. And I was like, okay, maybe not half of Gauteng, like the, the, the greater part of Johannesburg, let me put it that way. And I was like, oh, this is very interesting until it was switched off at 2100 on the 27th of October, 2014. Now, the question I was asking myself, why was the SIM had to be swapped? Is my question. Was there evidence that she was hiding? What's going on? Can Vodacom pick up what was in the previous card? I think this is what the defense needs to ask. So that they get to find out what exactly was in there that uh, Kelly Kumano allegedly, when she uh, made a swim swap, uh, she was hiding. What is it? There's some, probably there's some records that she was trying to hide. And hence, she did what she did. As I've said earlier on, that I think that this exercise with Pinky, it is to get to Kelly Kumano. Basically, to arrest her. Basically, they are executing plan B. This is the state, by the way. It could also mean that the state is busy rectifying the mistake of not incorporating uh, docket 375 into 636. And hence, I was saying earlier on that I think the state is either sneaking in uh, docket 375 or they are slowly introducing it in this trial so that they can have everybody that we will send to Mayor on the 26th of October 2014 to come and answer who is the person that pulled the trigger. But the question I'm also asking, if they are slowly introducing 375, what then happens to 636? Do these guys get acquitted or they are going to add 637, I mean, 6, uh, 375 onto 636? And then we now have 12 accused. I am betting that uh, the state, since I think, I suspect, they are rectifying the mistake that Baloy made by choosing 636 instead of 375. And, uh, and the state probably is going to apply for section 174, basically acquitting the five men that stand accused of killing Senzo Mayor. And if my suspicions are correct, then the state is moving in the right direction. And I have to ask as well, is it because of the election results? Well, we'll see, because time will tell. I don't think that we have the full picture yet, but I think Baloy as well as Sibanda are busy painting it. But at the same time, there are some cookerization because Sibanda put in a bundle a document that was smeared with something. The whole legitimacy, not legitimacy, what was it? Legil, uh, and, uh, no, legil, legilibility. The legilibility part, I mean, when something that is not legit, it means it is not clear. It is dirty. It is something that is unreadable. So meaning that somebody either t pexed something or somebody scratched a certain word or somebody did something deliberately to make or maybe the paper folded and when they did the 
what do you call this the photocopying the folded part or the uh, the part that got uh, crisp then it uh, produced uh, this very dark um copying and as a result it was no longer looking legit so in my mind i'm like but come on i agree with judge Rata asking or, or telling not reprimanding telling sibanda that but the fact is this document this document when you uh stapled it it was not legit and then he left it like that and i was like bro you should have just shouted or at least dismissed this whole paper but then again i think a plan b has got to work since plan a has fallen apart so like i said this entire exercise is facing kelly kumano's possible arrest and i think she's going to be charged with the following charges as i've written them down i said she may be charged with fraud of course um doing the sim swap of a dead man uh the very same night in fact a few hours after he was pronounced dead around 9 15 on the 27th 26th of october 2014 so it's going to be fraud tempering with evidence because the possibility there was evidence in that phone as um in that sim card hands as she swim swapped it and this is something that the defense needs to canvas uh tempering with deceased phone i don't know if there's such a charge and defeating the ends of justice by not reporting the swim swap to the investigating officers back in 2014. So there's a possibility that that is what she may go down for. And as for Chico Twala, he would have to answer how come your cell phone, sir, was uh, pinging all over Fosloras on the night of Senzo Mewa's death. Of course, he's going to say I was at home, blah, 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 whatever, but this is also going to force him to answer to that call that Kelly Kumalo made to him to tell him about the death of Senzo Meiwa. And why was he the one that was told instead of an ambulance and police called? And also his son, Longwe. And I heard allegedly that around the time of Senzo Meiwa's death, his revolver went missing. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. So could it be that the revolver that was involved in the killing of Senzo Mayo in 2014? Well, I guess time will tell. Guys, this is all that I picked up today. Uh, I hope that my suspicions may be correct. I hope so. So that we get this whole thing wrapped up about the five innocent men that stand accused of killing Senzo Mayo. Those that have committed heinous crimes at 30% the is there at the back. Listen, listen. They must go and continue serving their hectic time in jail for what they've done to other people. As for Danzi, he needs to be set free. As for Muzi, he needs to be set free so he can go and prepare for his appeal on what happened on the 12th of December, 2023. And uh, I don't know about number four, what his case is. I know number three, he's serving 15 years in prison for that gun. Remember that gun uh, that they want, that bullet head? to be, um, what do you call this, uh, uh, pinned on the five men that killed Senzo Mewa? Mm -hmm. That's the one that he's serving a, a crime for. I think it has something to do with some taxi owner in Alexandra, blah, blah, blah. I'm not interested in all of that. What I'm interested in is justice for Senzo Mewa, who shot and killed Senzo Mewa on the 26th of October, 2014. My suspicion stands. And I'm sure the entire clan also say well come on seriously let plan b be rolled out and get to the truth anyways guys if you like the video give it a like if you didn't like the video give it a like anyways do subscribe to my youtube channel and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel i see you you are super thanking the channel even though i have not posted thank you guys so much may you be entirely and abundantly blessed also, leave me a comment down below and let me know what did you pick up on Pinky's testimony since yesterday? Do you trust her? Do you think she's telling the truth? Do you think they are headed towards plan B375 or they are sneaking it in? Please let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for listening to me. Don't forget to share this video far and wide. Do not leave without smashing the like button, guys, because we need to get the numbers up one more time. 
by liking the video. I'll see you next time with a new video. Goodbye. But Coco said 93. What 93? I I get it thunder. Get it thunder. Oh Coco Basa 193. I trash him. Gyan thunder. Gyan thunder. How gyan thunder shame gyan thunder.